Thank you very much, uh, Vision Lamka, for giving me this opportunity. And respected guests and all uh, students, teachers, and all the resource person. <clears throat> I take this opportunity to thank each and every participants and each and every personalities that are present here today. Actually, this topic, which is given to me by the Vision Lamka, uh, frankly speaking, this is going to be my first uh, work on these areas. Actually, I have worked a little bit on uh, livelihood and occupation and other social issues, but on forest, ex to be precise, this is uh, my first debut, <laughs> okay. So uh, I should admit that this is going to be, not going to be exhaustive study, but a research in progress. So ongoing research progress, okay. So uh, I would also seek uh, feedback and advice from experts and uh, concerned departments and other uh, participants too. Okay, uh, my topic is uh, afforestation, afforestation response of the hill people. And once I was given this one at the first place, but when I do uh, deep research, I began to realize the difference between afforestation and reforestation. So I talked to Pasroom and then I asked, seek his permission to uh, change, not exactly change, to modify, as I wish, <laughs> according to the convenience. So I just make it a slash afforestation, reforestation, response of the hill people. And okay, please, next one. And I also give the definition of all these terminologies, uh, deforestation, reforestation, and afforestations. And I don't need to read all this uh, again and again, because I hope we, all already, we have already understood and learned. Okay, next. Okay, I would like to highlight some facts about forests, even though I'm not for, from forest department. Uh, there are three trillions trees on planet, and uh, before the human civilization, it was double. It, and the second point could be 10 billion more trees are cut down than planted. So this has already led to a carbon crisis. And tropical rainforest was 50% of uh, earth species, terrestri terrestrial species, and, but uh, tropical rainforest covers only 6% of the uh, world's land. And we know that all trees and natural vegetation acts as carbon sink. Next, please. And here, 1.6 billion people worldwide rely on forest for livelihood. And according to 2015 Paris Agreement, we need one trillion tree to reduce the Earth's temperature by 1.5 degrees Celsius. And it is very uh, said that more than 860,000 hectares of all trees of all trees, all growth tropical rainforests have been destroyed annually. Okay, let's directly focus on the forest cover in Manipur and then to Churuchanpur. This is uh, the forest cover in legal status, the forest cover of Churuchanpur, uh, no, Manipur. Uh, they are divided, classified into the three types. One is reserve forest, protected, and then unclassed. A reserve forest cover only 8.4% of the total forest area in Manipur and protected forest stays 23.9% while, while unclassed is 
and all the time the bond of contention arise from this and class forest as we know and the total area of forest in Manipur is uh, more than 17,000 okay and now okay this is the data statistic based on state of for uh, indian india state of forest report in 2019 we have uh, they classified into they classified forest into uh, very dense forest types more moderately dense forest open forest and then uh, scrub so uh, in manipur we have seen a decrease in uh, forest cover where from 2017 to 2019, which is uh, 499 square kilometer decrease in forest cover. And we can see the district-wise distribution. Uh, let's directly focus on Churchanpur. We get 249.49 decrease in uh, forest cover. So it is a fact that forests do decrease, in, or for, there is forest loss, forest cover loss in Manipur, as per the F, uh, ISF report. And out of this 499 square kilometer loss, 249 square kilometer is from Surachanpur district alone. Hence, a forestation or reforestation. That is why we need uh, certain steps of a forestation. Okay. Let us briefly discuss uh, the factors of forest loss, deforestation in Manipur. Uh, this uh, narrative or this statement is uh, given by me uh, based on secondary as well as primary sources. I don't want to generalize on those uh, general causes that we learn in schools and colleges and all, but I learned to, uh, I want to, I wish to uh, mainly focus on Manipur itself and what is uh, basically uh, practicable or what is basically true in Manipur. That is what I was trying to find. So. Uh, for that, I interviewed 30 selected persons. Uh, most of them are educated in and around Churchanpur. And I also asked their opinion, what was the uh, causes of forest uh, cover loss, the loss of forest cover. And I can see, I, I, uh, I saw the different, I superimposed with the general view and the secondary, that I collected from the secondary sources. So these are some of the causes. Developmental projects. Developmental projects like dams, construction of dam, canals, roads, railway, etc. And increased felling of trees for timber logging, firewood, charcoal, jhum cultivation, the third one forest fire, urban and settlement growth. And then the last one, Kani cultivation, poppy cultivation. And when I ask from my selected uh, interviewees or uh, samples, uh, I got that Kani plantation got 33%, and new settlement and urban expansion, and uh, timber and firewood were the same, in percentage, and few of them blame development works and zooming. So, let me talk a little bit about uh, this development work. I did uh, some research. Uh, I, I I wrote a research paper in 2011, based on the survey I did in. I did, I did among the uh, displaced, Kugadam displaced families. Uh, what I found was 16 villages were displaced that we know, and thousands of families displaced, and um, all paddies were submerged. But one very exciting thing is, uh, intriguing thing is that, before displacement, 
Only 6% of the families were engaged in Zooming. After this place, 44% engaged in Zooming. So there is an increase of 44% before and after displacement. And, you know, heavy dependence on forest produce, like uh, charcoal burning, tim uh, lumbering, fuel wood, uh, felling of trees, they increased from 4.6% to 50%. So, uh, this is a living truth that due to developmental projects like such as dams, I don't hate dams, but because of these uh, certain, t these uh, developmental projects, uh, there is a decrease in forest cover. The price has to be paid by forest. And even for the, this, the lake expansion also, there are so many forest lands submerged. And then, like in full, Ziribam in full railways, okay? That also would have already destroyed a lot of forests. And uh, timbering, timber logging, firewood collection, charcoal burning. Forest fires and urban expansion, urbanization and urban sprawl. Okay, I give an example of one of my friend's research on Imphal City, Imphal, uh, urban sprawl in Imphal. See, those yellow shaded colors are agriculture fields, and the red ones are uh, built up house or settlements. In 2006 and 2015, there is a difference. So, Okay, next. And this may not be very clear, but I uh, extracted from Google Ad about the growth of Churchanpur Lamka town from 2002 to a bit from 2000 to 2020. Those red marks were the uh, settlement extent, settlement areas. That one, the first one is uh, 2000. And then 2005, 2010, next. And 2015 and 2020. So there is uh, pressure given on the surrounding or peripheral areas and forest cover due to urbanization. Next. And carnic cultivations. The uh, bad thing I should say about carni cultivation is uh, the destruction of standing trees and the never returning of the standing trees again. Because the farmers used to uh, use chemical fertilizer, chemical weedicides, soil, water combined and then they pour on the uh, saplings of trees. And then, along with the grass, the tree saplings died. And even the roots decayed. The roots were uh, finished, finished up. So they could not return back anymore. <clears throat> this is uh, very, one of the awful practice of uh, poppy cultivations. Because poppy flowers, as they said, according to uh, the real farmer's <laughs> uh, experience. They said that they cannot compete with other crops and, and uh, other uh, plant species. That's why they have to, we have to kill other, we have to annihilate or remove other uh, plant species. Okay, next please. Okay, this is forest cover change in Churchanpur district, GIS map. I am sorry that I could not give the numerical statistics because of technical problem, but I somehow can extract this uh, map image. Uh, okay, the yellow shade is forest land, and uh, brown one is June plus deforested land, and uh, blue water bodies and paddy lands, settlements. Yeah, okay. Yellow is paddy lands and settlements is red. We can see the difference 2000 and to 2020. And focus on the June plus deforested lands. Okay. 
In the eastern part of Churchanpur subdivision, now Saikot subdivision is uh, seeing a very large scale of degradation compared with the western uh, fringe of Churchanpur district. This is the old Churchanpur map, not including pairs of. Okay. This is the extent of uh, forest degradation. Okay, let's, uh, I want to mention a few uh, effects of deforestation for knowledge sec. Uh, firstly, we can say the soil erosion. My seniors and my, uh, my colleagues have, have already talked about soil erosion and water supply and the depletion of water sources due to uh, deforestation. We don't have to repeat much. And the second one is uh, uh, habitat biodiversity loss. Okay, before I, before I come to uh, biodiversity loss, I would like to highlight one uh, alarming uh, development that I found in, uh, in related to Hugadam. Uh, because of rampant deforestation in the catchment areas, I fear that one day siltation will be too much that the lake of Hugadam would be uh, over flooded. And then, uh, given the fact that the canal both sides are not properly functioning, okay, there will be no chance of releasing of the uh, surplus water. So what could be the impact that is dangerous <clears throat> and alarming? And when I was young, we used to call this house of Pimual as ghost city because of the thick and dense forest cover. But now, uh, last year, some of my students said that they went for hiking and there was only grasses growing. Okay. And there are so many mythological narrative, uh, mythological stories attached to this Haupi, Tangzing uh, mountains uh, because of the, you know, the density of forests, the denseness of forests. But now, sadly, they have been already depleted, uh, destroyed, then they degraded, and now only grass survive. And the resultant impact that we can expect is uh, soil erosion and siltation. And you know this Haupi Mual, Haupi mountain is the catchment areas of Huga, Huga Dam, Huga Lake. Okay, okay, biodiversity loss. 70% of land, animals, and plant species live in forests. So entire species could be wiped out. When, when habitat of wildlife were disturbed, what happened? Main animal conflict used to occur. Two, three years back, Churchanpur town experienced a very wild uh, incidence. Pigs, okay? Uh, chicken pigs were, you know, the intestines were taken, they were attacked, and we don't, know, we don't really know the cause. Okay, whatever the cause, I think, Whatever the cause may be, I think this is some kind of sign that we <clears throat> face now as man animal conflict. Okay. Anyway, gain, increase in greenhouse gas, lack of trees, lack of trees allows greater amount of greenhouse gas that everybody knows because vegetation acts as carbon sink. They absorb carbon dioxide and release oxygen and loss of livelihood for human. Actually, I missed some. Loss of livelihoods for human beings. Almost 25% of world population depends on forest and forest products. And about 70% of Manipur population live in rural areas, which uh, clearly states, which clearly signifies that we depend on forest for our livelihood. Loss of forest will be very dear to us. It will be very uh, painful to us. Okay, thanks. 
This is the forest, uh, the work done by Forest Department, dear Forest Sipur. I like to highlight a little bit about their good deeds, I should say, and the step taken by them, a forestation, reforestation in Sisipur. Under Green India Mission, they planted timber and fruit trees, and Kampa, okay, timber and fruit trees, National Bamboo Mission, NEC, from NEC Agroforestry in Danudet Ops, and tribal sub plan, and state plan, they said that only few received, and that it too only in uh, reserve forest. Okay, next. So tree plantation at this is the picture of tree plantation at Mun Munpi Hang Lab and Tuitapi Sisipur by the local people under DFO and RFO in 2021. Okay, next please. And this is in Hangkot, Sisipur, and Taeyang Gothol and Hang Lab. And Pai Hill one is now beginning to be mature. Next. Okay, now let's see the response of the common people about afforestation. My burden is whether we talk, no matter how much we talk about the importance of afforestation, reforestation, but if the common people does not understand what is all about afforestation and if they don't care about it at all, what will be the use? Okay. That's why I went to uh, meet some villagers who are from here as well as from uh, the remote areas <clears throat> through phones and through personal interview. And then I asked about what is, all, what is their understanding level of afforestation. So this is what, what they respond to me, what they responded to me. Do you know the meaning of afforestation? And 37% said yes. And the second question, do you think forest cover in our district decreasing? And majority said yes. Okay, and, and the interesting <coughs> point is the six point, the, the point number six, do you plan to start one? Maximum, majority of them said no, 75%. And the reason they give, I don't give in statistics, but in general, they have no lens. They said we, ha we have no lens and we have no time and we have no idea how to do it. And they also said they are not interested. Okay. So my general observation based on all this uh, interaction with uh, some of the indigenous people, I should say, is that only elite groups participate in afforestation and reforestation, like the village chiefs, private individuals, enter entrepreneurs, uh, entrepreneurs uh, government job holders, bureaucrats, and politicians take up afforestation. And the common people are just used for labor supply. And they don't get the fruits of afforestation or reforestation, or the profit or whatever accrued from these activities is not enjoyed by the common uh, people, the khotaga, okay? And community land questions. When I asked the DF of Sisipur, he said, as he said that we planted, we use only community land, community land for a forestation program or for a reforestation program. But what is mean by community land? In reality, community land is not existing. The land belongs to, all land belongs to, all unclassed land belongs to the chiefs and private individuals, where the common uh, dwellers or the common villagers have no say. So, community land exists only in name. Chiefs have sole ownership and authority. Common villagers don't have the freedom to do whatever they desire with the lands. And fixity of land use. Most farmers are allotted land by the chief for June, and the crop patterns or crop items are rice and vegetable cultivations, and they have no freedom to switch 
to other activities like plantation farming. And if they even switch, if they ever switch also, who will supply rice to them? How will they get uh, rice produce? And they have no idea of a forestation. Most people don't have this idea. There is something beyond their concern, capacity and even social and economic status. And even some private landowners fear the government that it will acquire, slowly acquire their land by way of plantation. This is an interview with an interview made by an ex-official foresters with some of the landowners. And they give priority, more priority to their livelihood security than the, you know, the notion of forest cover or green cover. Most farmers are concerned about their livelihood. In their mind, the forestation or reforestation is secondary to them. And sometimes they said that deforestation is a myth because it is an exaggeration. This is what some opinion I got from uh, some people I interact. A normal cycle of doom culture does not cause deforestation. That is what they say. Exactly this is true. Because they left some standing trees, and at least knee-high trees, so that can regenerate again. And question on Kani, it is said that man causes insufficient crop production, loss of productivity in Jum land, and they have no secure job to sustain or improve the standard of their living. And also the craze for quick and handsome returns is also the attraction. And they said that poppy can be practiced side by side with other crops cultivation. I mean, within a year, and poppy does not take much longer time, they said. In a free time, they can do that. This is what, uh, the, uh, an opinion that I got from some of, uh, uh, some opinion or some uh, ideas on poppy cult culture in our uh, districts. And gain from forestry, certain individuals do gain from a forestation. This is one good result that I found with my interview, uh, uh, from my interview with a retail forest official. And like, for example, Hyang Dung Chief got uh, some income, a good deal of income. Tang Lian Chief, Bua Lian Chief, few individuals from Singhats and others accrued uh, good incomes from forest product. This is based on interview with a retail forest official. Okay, some of the suggested measures I choose are, uh, firstly, we have to accept the fact that deforestation is taking place in Manipur and also in Sisipur district. That is official report. But there is no cause for panic, I should say, because uh, except that the catchment areas of water sources are in dangerous position, the proportion of forest covers is still in a healthy position, about 75% while the national level is only 25%. And except changes in land use pattern. Okay, because of land use pattern like urbanization, uh, forest, pressure could be given to forest, but that is nature, a natural cause of modernization. So we have to accept that also. And infrastructure development activities has to take place. We cannot blame those things and in the laugh, in a, uh, in, 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 you know, uh, in a care for forests so much that we have to stop infrastructure development program. That is not a good idea. So, measures could be let us engage the community, community based afforestation and reforestation, like. Uh, led by, maybe led by the chief, village authority, youth club, self-help group, and, uh, but commonly own and share the products or the 
profit by the whole villagers, not the chief alone. Okay. And the second one is traditional village forest reserve or traditional village forest reserve that we used to have during since our forefathers' time. That is Meilam. In Mizoram, they said Waimea Reserve. In uh, uh, among the Meite communities, they call it Umanglai or sacred groves. Okay. And Khamkui Kev at uh, Tangkul at Ukrul and Purul Akutpa at Paumei, uh, among the Paumei tribes at Mao. Okay, Meilam is a reserve forest that is uh, not to be touched by anybody. To, 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 to safeguard the village settlements from forest fires. And only when extreme need arises, they can take or they can cut some according to the requirement. Otherwise, it's not uh, permissible. And this is not uh, owned by the government, this is not owned by individual, but this is owned by the community as a whole, not even the uh, chief alone. Okay, I, I talked to one uh, Alusintam villager, he said that when I was young, we used to reserve this, uh, we used to reserve this Meilam culture. And then the chief, the wife of the chief, once in dire need of firewood, she happened to enter the forest and cut some uh, dry woods. And then somebody saw her. And then he says she was, uh, she had to stand before the judgment of the authority. And then she had to find one pig. She had to kill one pig. Okay. To that extent, it was strict. But now I'm sad, I know what I'm uh, very much saddened about our present situation is that which is uh, the land, the unclassed forest, especially unclassed forest or uh, a, what we call it, a tribal land, unsurveyed land, or uh, house, uh, house land, the name itself uh, depicts that it's house land, but actually it's a common land. And in, London, uh, in England, uh, in the 17th, 18th century, there was certain uh, legislation passed which gives the common people the land. Okay, this is known as the commons. They call it the common. And that is practiced in our place. That is uh, brought into our place and we call it unclassed forest or uh, house land or uh, Gam Ong, okay, like that. But now all this house land, uh, no, Gam Ong or the community lands have been used up, okay, uh, dictative, dictatorially by the chiefs or land. All the products, everything, and all the, you know, all the initiatives taken in uh, collaboration with the forest department, whatever, they have already uh, I, overpowered. So, leaving aside the common villagers. Okay. This. Alternative livelihoods to Zoom farmers and villagers, like Vandan Mission. The details, I, I don't have time for about Vandan Mission, but I at least want to uh, uh, highlight about Vandan Mission is that uh, a mission that is uh, a scheme that is made by the central government to help those common villagers who depend on forest and forest products, who does not own any land, so that they can use it or they can uh, further reprocess those uh, resources they collected from the forest and use it in a very meaningful way or they can resell it with a good price. This is about a Vandan scheme. Okay, and I wa also want to suggest that we have to discourage privatization of forest land in interior areas. Okay. Uh, let us not talk about uh, the pakapata in interior areas, but let us not allow at all to buy uh, forest lands in the interior areas by individuals. Otherwise, the community or the villagers won't be devoid, totally devoid of resources. 
And then what is left to be done for them? Except kani cultivation, except fast uh, means of getting money. You know, everything is done out of frustration and also out of greed also. So at least if we allow also, we may give permission within the peripheral areas of the town, but not in the interior areas, like enclosure. There is a history of enclosure in England where there were a lot of problems, even war occurred. Okay, wise practice of zooming, cutting off trees above knee height, and no removal of roots, creating fire lines. And then, green space in urban areas and peripheral areas. These are some of the good examples I found in and around our place. Uh, Victor Farm, as you can see, there is a lot of uh, conservation of forests and girls are resort, and Puneng Zasuan Farm in Bungmual, who he collected a lot of species, there is indigenous species especially, and then he planted in his farm, and then he got a fruit. And Loya Forest, this Loya Ngamba is a man from Imphal, he was so much shocked by the degradation of forest in Langol Hills, and then he gave up all his carriers, and then he went up to stay in the Langol Hills. There is a reserve forest. The government allowed him because he wants to uh, replant trees. Okay, which was once they degraded, he made it a thick, a dense forest again. And he struggled it for 20 years. Okay, next. Okay, oh, wait, 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 wait. Uh, plant replacement for every tree cut down. Okay, organized mass plantation. Okay, all this. We, Next, next. And permanent terrace field. In, in order to stop or discourage uh, shifting cultivation and cutting off trees, we can, we can encourage this soil farming. Soil farming is this head rows, planting of head rows. In between that, there is uh, uh, crop cultivations. Okay? And this is. Uh, Terrace farming in Senapati. Okay, next, next. And then discourage or stop poppy cultivations, replace with viziculture. They said that uh, cultivation of cabbage or mustard or potatoes is very good in the field left, by, left behind by poppy because they have done so much of fertilizers and even the soils are very loose. Okay, that will be a good idea. And encourage intercropping like viziculture, animal husbandry, poultry across the hills. And what about oil palm? The Manipur government is now planning uh, 66,000 hectares for oil palm. Okay, we can test it whether it is uh, good for the environment or ecology or not. Let us uh, allow it to, to be tested here. If it's not uh, conducive, then we can think another, way, another thing. And revive joint, for, uh, revive joint forest management. That is uh, participation of the communities and the uh, uh, government. Okay. Next. Thank you.